What's going on everyone? This is RR from FinSuite and in this video, we are going over the FN Suite CMS tools for Webflow. Now this video specifically is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how you can set up anchors and not just normal anchors, but they're going to be dynamic anchors that you can use for maybe a frequently asked questions page or a help page or a section page where you will have anchors and it will as you press the button it will scroll down to that specific point and it's going to be dynamic therefore easy to update and easy to add new items this is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how you can get started into creating this and now we're in our designer and let's go ahead and start establishing our page so that we can go ahead and learn how to use the anchor tool now, what are some of the most common uses that you can use for this anchor tool? Well, some of the most common things would be like the FAQ, like a frequently asked question type content, or let's say you have different items of different categories of items that you want to put in a list that when you click a certain part, it automatically scrolls down or scrolls to that point. And that's what we call an anchor because um, that tag will have an anchor point or you can have you know some type of description type item and i think that will work for this now for this particular tutorial i went ahead and created a new collection and let me go ahead and show that to you here on the screen and if you want to learn how to create a collection we have a video about that go ahead and go to that video we took we take you step by step how to create a CMS. And so as you can see, I created a new CMS. Let me just show you what's in that CMS collection. We call it CMS Docs. So I'm gonna make, we're gonna make a, uh, a, a, a page where it has the, the different types of CMS Docs, which is the tools that we have that we've been making these videos for, um, the different tools that you can use to upgrade your CMS. We're gonna have diff, uh, the tool titles on the left side, and we're gonna have the descriptions on the right side. We're gonna make it a little longer with a little bit of dummy text here and there, some lorem ipsum text. But as you can see, this is what I have here. There's really just simple things. We have the name, the slug, as you know, that's automatic. And then the description, I just got the description really from the page, uh, which is when you scroll here all the way up, CMS, you know, just that really subtitle. And then we have this thing called the URL. Now this is important. Um, I called it URL, it's not really a URL, it's more like an ID or a tag, or it really, it's just a copy of the slug. But we can't name it slug because that is already an item that's been taken. We can't name it ID as well. So I went ahead and just put URL. And what really this is gonna be is just you copying the slug and then pasting it here. That's it. So as you can see, we combine, anchor, nest, even with previous next, it's just a copy of this pasting it over here and that's it. So we went ahead and made this CMS and this is the CMS that we're going to use for this tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. Go to the page and we're gonna go ahead and create a section and a container. So let's add those things now. Now we're gonna name this section section we the, these are uh, classes that we've already pre-made before as uh, because it's the same um webflow document of the other things that we've made but it's just a totally new page so let's go up with the section and it went ahead and added the 100 padding on the top 100 padding on the bottom <clears throat> and then we'll put a container right inside and name it container as well and then we already have our prefix set now we're going to do this. We're going to add a, a, a second class, a secondary class to the container called Flex. And the reason why is I'm going to make this container a Flex container. So we're going to go ahead and make that because we want it where we have um, the left side on the left and the right side on the right, right? So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and make it a Flex container. We're going to align it from the top, okay? Top, align top, justify left. And so make sure you do that. Now let's go ahead and add a two divs on this one. We're gonna have a left side div. We're gonna call it left side. That's where our buttons are gonna be. And then we're gonna have another div on the right side, which we're gonna call right side. And that's gonna have the content. So let's start by creating the left side. I want you to follow this step by step because we wanna show you how to create 
something similar to what FinSuite has created. So we're going to go ahead and put a div here <clears throat> inside. And we're going to call this div left side. Very simple. Left hyphen side. Make sure you add hyphens in your class names. And we're gonna make we're gonna set this at around 30%. 30% think will be a good width so that it doesn't take up the whole thing, but we have a certain pre you know preset width. And this is very important. Make sure you make this left side sticky. And the reason why we want to make it sticky, we want to make it so that as you're scrolling down, this left side stays there. Okay. Um, as you can see, we have there is a clonable that FinSuite has created for for you where if you look at it um there's also there's already a preset clonable kind of similar to how this one is right there you see that so this left side will be fixed so we're going to make something similar to this we're going to show you how to make it step by step that's what we're doing now so we're going to make this fixed and we're going to add 50 from the top what this means is that once it reaches 50 picks from the top it's going to stick and it won't scroll past the screen anymore and to make it um to make it aligned with it we're also going to add 50 pixels on the margin at the top okay as you scroll down it will stick now that we have that we'll go ahead and add some another div inside here so this is our container that we will make sticky now we'll go ahead and add some stuff here. We're gonna add another div block, and we're gonna call this anchor links. This is a very important name to remember. You'll need to remember this later on. And this is pretty much the container where we're going to put in the anchor links, the different links that we have, okay? Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add another one inside here, another div which is a link block because we want this to be clickable. Instead of making a button so that we have more control, we're gonna make it a link block. We're gonna call this anchor hyphen button. Now this is going to be our button. And we're gonna set this at 100% to take up the whole width of the container, which was left side. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and style this button because this button will contain our um our um our different uh titles of the classes of the uh, of the cms tools so let's go ahead and put a text block inside this and then we're going to go ahead and style it a little bit okay so let's do this one and you want what do you want to, what you want to do by the way even though we have a text block inside you want to style it using the make sure you're highlighted at the anchor button so that you have an easier way to style it okay so we're gonna do some things here we're gonna we're not gonna have an underline we're gonna make it the color purple that's kind of been our color so far and let's make it our font which has been Montserrat or Montserrat however you pronounce it we we'll make it 16 pixels with a height of about 24. And then we're going to add some padding on this one. We're going to add 10 pixels on all sides, all around. <clears throat> and then let's add probably a line around the whole thing. And we're going to make it purple as well. So that would be our, the name of our, that would be kind of the look of our button. We're going to name this anchor one. And the reason why we have this is because this is what you're going to see. Now what the user will see once we generate this with the JavaScript code, he's, she's not, they're not going to see this anchor one, but this is really for you, the creator, so that you're able to edit this easily. Let's go ahead and duplicate it around three times, uh, two times. So we're going to have three copies of it. One, two. Now we want some padding so margins on the bottom we don't want to have it sticking together so let's add about 20 pixels on the bottom that sounds about right that looks about right let's name this one two and let's name this one three so we have our three buttons here we have it in the containers that we need this anchor button is another important name that you need to remember and we're gonna have we're gonna go to the visual script light writer later on and have all these names uh, we're going to show you where to input all these names. Now, we're going to set an active 
for the anchor button so that we know what part we are in. So what we're going to do, we're going to name an active class. We're going to put a secondary class on one of the buttons, not all of them, just one of them, preferably anchor one. We're going to add an active class, a secondary class active. And this one is not going to be, uh, we're not just going to name it active. We want to name it anchor hyphen active. And the reason for that, because I have other things that are named active and I don't want to, you know, um, mess that up with each other. So we'll go ahead and put that there. And what we're going to do to make it different, we're going to make it semi bold, the font, and then we're going to make the width of the container three so that we know this is the active button. And so our left side is pretty much done. We have our left side done and we're going to go ahead and create the right side. And now that I've created our left side, we're going to go ahead and start on the right side, which will be the content. Remember, the left side is the buttons. The right side is the content. So we're going to have our container. We're going to add another div here. So let's add another div. And we're going to call this, since we call it the left side, left side, we'll call the right side, right side. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set this right side at about 60% with some margin on the left to add some separation. So let's do this 60%. Add some margins, maybe about 50 pixels. That looks about right. And now we'll go ahead and start and add our CMS collection list. Now the temptation will be, since this anchor links has some margin on the top, that we want to align it on the right side. You don't want to do that because we want to align something else on the right side. I will show that to you in a bit because we want it to align well when you click it and the anchor scrolls up automatically as you click it, we want it to align very well. So we'll go ahead and add the CMS collection here and this is when we'll add the CMS collection that we just made. So let's go ahead and name these real quick. We're gonna name the wrapper our standard collection list wrapper. And we're gonna get the source from to CMS docs, which is the CMS that we made. And we, this is the setting that we want. We wanted just one line each, so that's about right. Now we're gonna have the collection list. Now we wanna name this collection list into something else, not just collection list, because we wanna make sure that it points to this one. This is very key. So this one, we're gonna name it anchor list anchor list there's an important name that we're going to remember once we get into the script writer and then we're going to name the collection item just our standard name that we've always named it which is collection list item and notice it already added some of the stuff in the bottom uh, we're actually going to make, we're going to do a little change because we don't want a margin on the bottom. We want the margin at the bottom to be zero because of alignment issues. So I'm actually not going to name it that. I'm just going to go ahead and name it anchor list item. So that is important to remember. Now we're gonna go ahead and add another div inside here, and that is the one that we're gonna style to make it uh, um, to make it aligned with the tabs on the left. So we're gonna go ahead and add a div inside here, and we're gonna name this one anchor item. Now I know it's kind of confusing because we said the other one was anchor list item. This is going to be anchor item. Anchor list item is not really an important name to remember right now. Um, the one that we need to remember is anchor item because we're going to start this later. We're going to put this on the code as well. Okay. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and add our items in this anchor item. Let's go ahead and add, first of all, our heading. And our heading is going to be taken from the name. And there's our name. We're going to go ahead and add a style for this one. Our style was heading. And it go ahead go, goes ahead and makes it into the style that we had before. And we're going to add another one. Another uh, a text block here. And we're going to name this one paragraph. So it's the styles that we've had. And we're going to get the text from the description. 
Okay, now I want this to be a little longer because if it's short, there's going to be some alignment issues and you want it to be a little longer. So I'm going to add a paragraph inside these items. It's going to be the same for all of them. It's going to be some standard lorem ipsum um, names. Okay, I'm going to name this a different class because I want to add some padding on top. Well, actually, I could just add a secondary class on top we're going to call this pad hyphen top and let's add maybe 20 pixels there you go let's make this a little longer so i'm going to make it twice okay and there you go so we have some sort of thing where it looks like a, uh, a frequently asked question and we can do some uh, uh some things with this later now this is very key what you're going to do on anchor item on the anchor item div you're going to add 200 pixels of padding on the top not margin i'm sorry not margin but padding and the reason why is so this the anchor is going to be at the top of this item see this is your anchor so uh, when it scrolls down, it's going to go to the top of this one. And we want it to kind of be in the middle so that as you click it, whatever is going to be in the middle. So the, the item that we want to show is going to be in the middle. Same with this one, same with this one, and so on and so forth. So that's how we're going to style it with 200 padding onto the top. Let's see what our thing looks like so far. Why don't we check it out? Let's publish it. And let's go ahead and look at the site. Good, that's exactly what we want. Notice how the buttons stick once you scroll down and it stays into the left side. That's exactly the effect that we want. So now that we have this, we're gonna create something inside the anchor item, which is a hidden item. And this hidden item is very important. So we're going to add a div block inside here. And we're going to name it anchor hidden. We're going to add some things here, but we're going to go ahead and <clears throat> uh, we're going to hide it later once we add the things that we need here. Styling won't matter as much because this is going to be hidden anyways. And we're going to put two things here. We're gonna put, uh, we're gonna pretty much put this anchor button in here, and we're gonna set a CMS on it. We don't want to set a CMS on this one. We want the CMS to set on this one, and it will point back. The JavaScript code will point back to this particular um, spot. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and add the link block. Do you remember? If you remember how we created this one, we're pretty much gonna recreate it here with the same class names. And that's why it's important to have these class names because then it becomes very easy to make it. So we're gonna add a, not a div block, I'm sorry. We're gonna add a link block here. And then we're gonna name it, I believe we named it anchor button. It's very important. And then we'll just leave that alone. We don't have to do anything there because we're gonna add a text block inside. And the text block will be, um, will, that's where we connect it to the CMS. So once you add the text block, get the text, you're gonna get it from the name. And this is the name that will show up on the left side. So now all of them has it, add classes, combine, anchor, we're good to go. And we're one last thing that we want to add on the hidden item. Do you remember on the CMS item, we added this thing called the URL. We want to add it here as well. And it really just has to be a text. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to have any style whatsoever. We just have to have it here so that the JavaScript code knows to, um, but when you click it, it goes to this particular item. So we're going to go ahead inside anchor hidden we're going to add another text block. And in this text block, we're going to get the text from the CMS docs. And we're going to get the URL. You don't have to do anything here. You can leave it just like that because what we're going to do, once you have the anchor button, once you have the text block, we're going to go ahead and I hide the anchor hidden item. And we don't want it to show. 
Let's go ahead and publish this even before we put the code. And once we put the code, we'll see the magic take effect. So now that we have these items, let's check it out one last time. <clears throat> it looks good to go. Now let's go into our best friend, the visual script writer, and add the things that we need to add and go ahead and get our code. We are in visual script writer. On the CMS list class, we're gonna put this right here, which is the anchor list. That is our CMS collection, okay? We're gonna name this anchor. Now you don't have to put an ad because the visual script writer will add, uh, uh, you don't have to add a period because the visual script writer will add a period for you. And even if you put one, it won't add an additional period. It's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and add anchor list, okay? And we're gonna go to anchor. Now there are four things that we're gonna add. First of all is the anchor button, which is this one right here, this anchor button. So we're gonna go ahead and add that in the visual script writer. Anchor button. And then we're gonna have the anchor ID. Now the anchor ID is this particular item that we had right here. Let me unhide it real quick which was the text block where we had the URL. And by the way, I totally forgot to do this. Make sure you put a name on it. So we're gonna go ahead and call it Anchor ID, okay? Anchor ID is the name for this one, and that's the name that we, that's the class that we wanna put on the Visual Script Writer. So we're gonna put Anchor ID. Now the button's target, let's go ahead and go back. The button's target is the container of the anchor buttons, which is anchor links. This part right here, that's what we're gonna put on the buttons target, anchor links. And then the active class is what we named this first button, the secondary class anchor active, so that the JavaScript knows that whenever something's active, that's gonna have this particular style. We named it anchor hyphen active. So we'll go put that there as well. Let's check our names and make sure they're good to go. And let's copy the code. Let's go back to our Webflow item, go to the page, go to settings, and then we'll add it inside the before body tag. And then we'll go ahead and click save, and we will click publish. Remember, it can't be just a preview. We have to click publish. I forgot to do one last thing. We forgot to hide this item because remember we showed it so that we can teach you where that's from let's hide that real quick publish it again now it should be good and here we go let's do this look at it we're going to click combine and notice it goes to that item and then anchor nest now this right here as you can see it has some buttons here where it's like not showing a bit that's just some some alignment issues because the reason why is because that was long enough. Now when you press add classes, you see combine is already kind of coming in there. And same thing here. Uh, even when you get here, anchor is already kind of inside it. And so this can be pretty easily fixed. What we can do is we'll just add, say, you know, uh, let's add like a margin on the bottom maybe 50 pixels on the bottom. And let's see how that works. Let's see if that fixes the alignment a bit. Click combine. Well, now it's not showing anything. So that's actually not margin. Let's add some padding. So let's do that. Well, let's do 100 just for the heck of it. Just to be sure, right? So it's not showing at all. And there you go. See, combine, anchor, nest, sort, and so on and so forth. Now, if you want to add another section, all you got to do, go to the collection, add a new collection, and we'll automatically, um, it will automatically and put it here. It makes it so easy to update. And the developers of FinSuite have just created an amazing product for us to use.
If you still have any questions or you're having trouble setting it up, I encourage you to check out SweetJS. Dot io and join the sweet js slack channel this is our customer service channel where you can ask any questions to the F to the finsuite team about setting up any of the tools that finsuite has to offer make sure you stay tuned for more videos and more tutorials that we have coming out on how you can use all the various tools that finsuite has to offer for your next webflow website that's effing sweet